The Battle of Trifop took place from 12 February to 4 May 1974 when South Vietnamese forces successfully launched a preemptive attack on a North Vietnamese base area in Ding Tuong province before North Vietnamese forces were scheduled to be moved to the area. Chapter 1 Background One of three principal People's Army of Vietnam infiltration routes, Corridor 1A crossed the Cambodian frontier near the border between Khine Phong and Khine Tuong provinces, traversed the maze of canals through the plain of reeds and ended in the watery wasteland called the Tri Phop where those provinces joined Ding Tuong province. A branch of Corridor 1B from the Parrot Speak of Sphi Raeng province entered the Tri Phop from the northeast. A Viet Minh base established during the First Indochina War, the Tri Phop was partly covered with brush, with little land suitable for cultivation, essentially a swamp that over the years had been laced with permanent fortifications and hidden storage areas. No allied force had succeeded in occupying or inflicting any serious damage to the installations or forces in the tri -fop. Immediately after 28 January 1973 ceasefire, South Vietnamese units in Ding Tuong were preoccupied with maintaining security in the central and northern reaches of the province and could not divert the forces necessary to clean out the Tri Phop, even though they were aware of increased pavement activity there. 67 A document captured on 9 August 1973 disclosed that the Z-18 Regiment of Pave Military Region 2 was moving into the Tri Phop from Kai Bay District in northern Ding Tuong Province and that it would probably be replaced in Kai Bay by the Dong Tarp 1 Regiment. Information in the document pertaining to planned attacks in northern Ding Tuong was confirmed by attacks on several outposts on 8 August. Furthermore, Aerial photography showed that fields north of the Tri Fop had been planted in rice, part of the Paven's effort to become self-sustaining in the Mekong Delta. With pressure mounting along Highway 4, however, four corps could not then challenge the Paven activities in and north of the Tri Fop. Nevertheless, the ARVN repulsed, with heavy losses to the Paven, numerous battalion-sized attacks against outposts and firebases in K Bay. Kai Bi and Sam Gieng districts during July and August. In the first week of September alone, Paven casualties in the region were 144 killed, while those of the ARVN were 17 killed, 67 to 8. The surge in Paven attacks, which continued through November, was motivated in part by the rice harvest and marked by Paven attempts to gather as much of it as possible. But beyond that, the Paven objectives were to protect the installations in the Tri Fop expand the base area there, and use the infiltration corridors from Cambodia without interference from the ARVN. Success in these ventures would force contractions of the ARVN defenses along Highway 4, demoralize the soldiers of the ARVN 7th Division charged with the responsibility and support the propaganda campaign among ARVN troops, 68 as the year wore on. ARVN units slowly wore down the four main force regiments in Pave Military Region 2, the Z-18th, Z-15th, E-24th and DT-1. Despite receiving hundreds of fresh replacements from the north, these regiments gradually lost ground to aggressive attacks. The Pavan 207th Regiment, which had suffered so badly in its disastrous Hong Nu campaign, was required to provide soldiers to replace losses in the E-24th Regiment. These demoralized soldiers were intercepted en route to the tri -fop area in September, their casualties were heavy and 14 were captured. The Paven 6th Division was disbanded in late 1973 and its depleted regiments were assigned to Paven Military Region 2. The South Vietnamese Joint Operations Center provided data on casualties in December 1973 that showed nearly 40% of all Paven killed during the last half of 1973 died in the Delta. Although the figures were estimations the ratio was probably very close to reality, supported as it was by weapons. Captured and corresponding ARVN casualties, 68 The South Vietnamese held the Khine Tuong province capital of Mok Ho and a base at Long Cot, both of which were well within 105 mm howitzer range of Paven artillery in Sphi Raeng, but there were great reaches of uncontrolled, unoccupied territory between the Cambodian border and the first major population concentration along Highway 4 through My Thomas the Paven 5th Division operated out of Sphi Raeng province in both directions. 
through Tainin province to Unlock and south toward my Thomas in early 1974, the 5th was north of Tainin but available for operations into Kain Tuon and Hania provinces, 90 although South Vietnamese forces were not strong enough to contain the Pavin's Phi Raying, they could limit the Pavin's freedom of movement, make resupply of troops costly and difficult, and inflict high casualties. To do this much, the ARVN had to hold Mok Hoa and Long Cot, seize the Pavin's logistical and operational base around Tri Phop and protect Highway 4 between Kai Le District and Mai Thomas in January 1974 intelligence became available to 4 Corps Commander Major General Win Vin Nei, that elements of the Pavin 5th Division were being ordered to Ding Tuong Province from Tainen. Later in the month, advance elements of the division were detected in the division's Phi Raying base, 92 Pavan soldiers captured on 27 January told their interrogators that a battalion of the division's 6th Regiment had been sent south to reinforce the understrength Pavan Z-18 Regiment in the tri -Fop area, their testimony, along with that of four recent ralliers and captured documents, also indicated that the Dong Tarp 1 Regiment, which traditionally operated in Ding Tuong, was still badly understrength, though it had recently received 300 Pavan replacements, following its December 1973 battles and would also probably receive more replacements from the 6th Regiment, 5th Division. The interrogators also learned that the Z-15 Regiment, had just received about 200 replacements from the North, but that it was short weapons and ammunition. Meanwhile, ARVN outposts, patrols, and air observers detected Pavan transportation elements moving past Tu Yinbin on infiltration Route 1A. Some of these were intercepted, and the ARVN captured large quantities of rice and ammunition, as well as a Pavan Transportation Company commander, 90 if the 5th Division were allowed to occupy the Tri-Fop, it would be extremely difficult to dig out, and the threat to Highway 4 would become intolerable. The previous year's experience had shown General Ney that his troops were capable of driving into and probably clearing the Tri-Fop of the Pavan elements particularly if he moved fast while the Pavan regiments were still reforming and receiving replacements. If he could establish a base of operations at Trifop, he could deny a vital logistical complex to the 5th Division, one that it would require for operations in Ding Tuong, 90. Chapter 2, Battle On 12 February, the ARVN 12th Infantry Regiment, 7th Division, Reinforced with two battalions of the 10th Infantry and two troops of armoured cavalry in personnel carriers, attacked through Tri Phop from the east and advanced to the Kain Phong Din Tuong province boundary. Three days later, the 14th Infantry Regiment, 9th Division, reinforced with one battalion of the 16th Infantry and two troops of armoured cavalry, attacked east from Mayan district town and linked up with the 12th Infantry on the western edge or the Tri Phop. This two-pronged attack was followed on the 19th by an attack by the 10th Infantry Regiment, minus the two battalions attached to the 12th, from Haomai village in northern Kaibi district, north to clear the southern edge of the Trifop. Completely enveloped, the Pavan in the Trifop suffered heavy losses in men and supplies. Elements of the Z-15 and Z-18 were identified in the battle, but most Pavan casualties were among rear service troops. Another element of the Pavan 5th Division, the 6th Battalion, 174th Infantry, was also identified in the heavy fighting around Mayan on the western edge or the Trifop, indicating that earlier intelligence concerning probable deployment of elements of the 5th from Tainin was valid. Pavan casualties were heavy that first week or the Trifop campaign, over 500 were killed, and the ARVN captured tons of ammunition and nearly 200 weapons. ARVN casualties were Light in comparison, 90 to 1 fighting flared through most of Kain Tuong and Ding Tuong provinces for the rest of February and until the last week of March. The center of action remained in the Tri Fop where the Pavan again reinforced, this time with the Dong Tarp 1 regiment which was sent north to join the Z-18. The ARVN kept up the pressure, and in successive weeks killed another 250 Pavan, capturing as many weapons. Meanwhile, Coven directed Pavan Military Region 3 to launch widespread attacks to take the pressure off Kain Tuong and Ding Tuong. Replacements, 
up to 3,000 according to two ARVN soldiers who escaped from captivity in Cambodia, were being readied for assignment to units in Sphi Reing province, 91 unable to counter ARVN advances on the battlefields, the Paven resorted to an increased terror campaign throughout the Delta. On 9 the March they fired an 82mm mortar shell into the primary schoolyard at Kai Le while the children were lined up waiting to enter their classes. 23 children died instantly, 46 others were badly wounded. Farther south, in Baklu, the Et Cong tossed a grenade into a religious service killing 9 and wounding 16, 91 ARVN operations on the Mayan front, on the western edge of the Trifop area, were being supported out of Khao Line, with supplies coming up from Zhao Dukon into Provincial Route 30. The forces on the eastern edge of the Trifop and those fighting north around Mohoa were being supported along into Provincial Route 29 out of Kai Lei. The ARVN successfully countered Paven attempts to cut these two routes, 91 the first phase or the Trifop campaign slowly wound down during the last part or march. The Dong Tarp 1 regiment picked up 150 replacements, freshly arrived from North Vietnam, and Paven Military Region 2, whose regiments were being battered in the Trifop fighting, received 200 replacements, who had been previously destined for Military Region 3. Reinforcing success in the last week or March, General Ney sent the 7th Ranger Group against the Dong Tarp 1 Regiment in the Trifop, where the Rangers killed over 30 and captured more weapons, 91 by the end of March. More than 1,100 Paven had been killed in the Trifop campaign, while the ARVN had fewer than 100 killed. Nearly 5,000 tons of rice were captured, along with over 600 weapons, 8 tons of ammunition and a large haul of weapon accessories, radios and other military equipment. Three Paven regiments, the Z-15, Z-18 and Dong Tarp 1, had been severely mauled, and the Trifop base area was denied to the Paven 5th Division, 91 work began immediately on the construction of fortified positions in the Trifop, enough to provide for posting an ARVN regiment there. The Paven Z-15 regiment meanwhile was recuperating in southwestern Ding Tuong province, attacking ARVN outposts and preparing to return to the Trifop. On 26 April two Paven battalions attacked the regional force battalion base at the village of Tri Fop. In a complementary attack farther south on the Kain Fong Ding Tuong province boundary, the Dong Tarp 1 regiment struck another RF outpost. Although temporarily successful, the Paven soon faced the ARVN's 14th regiment, and a troop of the 2nd Armoured Cavalry, and was routed with heavy casualties. Meanwhile, the 11th Infantry counterattacked in the Trifop and restored the lost position. The ARVN, by the first week in May, was therefore in firm control in the Trifop, with four RF battalions holding strong positions there. Paven forces in the area were weakened and demoralized, but elsewhere in the Delta they kept up their campaign of terror and the slow deterioration of local security continued. Although abductions and assassinations were predominant, the Paven attacked another school. On 4 May, eight rounds of 82mm mortar shells fell on the school at Song Fu, in Vinlong province, six children were killed and 28 wounded, 91. Chapter 3, Aftermath the ARVN had successfully prevented the Paven 5th Division from establishing a base from which to extend its operations, southward into Ding Tuong Province and westward toward Saigon through Longan Province. Denied this approach, the 5th Division built up their forces on the periphery of the Parrot's Beak, threatening the district headquarters at Mokhoa, but, more seriously, preparing to occupy the narrow strip of marshland between the Sphi Reing border and the Yam Company Dong River, the last real barrier between the Cambodian border and Saigon, only 48 kilometers away. Paven success would have strangled Tainin province, since the seizure of Godauha would end all land and water communications between Saigon and Tainin. The ARVN dealt with this threat by launching an armored thrust against Paven base areas in Sphi Reing starting in late March, 96.